Welcome to this tutorial, where we'll delve into JavaScript, a programming language that forms the backbone of Earth Engine. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have a solid foundation in JavaScript, enabling you to harness the full potential of Google Earth Engine for geospatial data analysis. So why JavaScript? JavaScript is a versatile, beginner-friendly, and lightweight programming language. It serves as the bridge between you and Earth Engine's powerful geospatial analysis capabilities. Don't be intimidated if you're new to programming. We'll guide you through step by step. JavaScript is an object oriented programming language. What does this mean? It treats everything from simple variables to complex functions as objects. Let's explore some fundamental JavaScript concepts. Client versus server requests. When working with Earth Engine, you'll often need to retrieve and process extensive geospatial data. Understanding the distinction between client and server requests is essential. Client request. Think of this as a request made from your local machine or browser where your code is running. It's suitable for simple tasks like visualizing an image or performing calculations on a small data set. For example, variable temperature is equal to 25 semicolon. Client request for local temperature calculation. Server request. Here, we leverage Google Earth Engine's immense computing power. This becomes crucial when dealing with large data sets. For example, calculating the average temperature over a 10-year period for a vast region. JavaScript Data Types JavaScript offers various data types, each serving specific purposes in Earth Engine. Let's explore them through examples. Strings Used for text data representation and closed in single or double quotes. Strings are handy for labeling and describing features and datasets. For example, variable city is equal to single quote New York. Variable description is equal to double string a bustling metropolis. Both of these variables are strings. Numbers. These represent numeric values, including integers, and floating point numbers. Numbers are your go to for calculations and measurements. For example, variable population is equal to an integer value, which is 8398748 semicolon. Variable temperature is equal to 25.5 semicolon. Floating point value. Booleans are logical values either true or false. They are pivotal in conditional statements and comparisons. For example, variable is raining is equal to true semicolon. This example indicates true Boolean operator, which means variables under is raining will be run as true values. Variable is sunny is equal to false semicolon. This example indicates false Boolean operator, which means variables under is sunny will be run as false values. Arrays. Arrays store multiple values in a single variable, each with an index number starting from zero. They're useful for storing collections of values or iterating over lists of objects. For example, variable fruits is equal to square bracket and each fruit within a single quote separated by a comma and square bracket closed and end the statement with a semicolon to prevent any syntax error. Here, the apple starts from zero number in the list. Variable numbers equal to square bracket and within it, numbers starting from one to five separated by a comma. Here, 
You can see we did not add single or double quotes because numbers are not stored as a string. Closing our array with semicolon. Here, one is zero number index in the list. Objects. Objects are far more complex data structures with key value pairs. They're commonly used to store metadata or attributes associated with features or data sets. In this code, person is the object storing information about a person named John Doe with his age and profession. JavaScript syntax. Every line of JavaScript code is a statement, and statements should end with a semicolon to mark their completion. For example, variable greeting is equal to single quote, hello world, and semicolon. If we don't put semicolon at the end, it will result to a syntax error of missing semicolon, like this. Comments in code. Comments, lines starting with double slashes, are not executed. They're helpful for testing and skipping time-consuming code sections. You can also comment larger code portions using slash star and star slash. For example, double slash. This is a single line comment. Slash asterisk. This is a multi-line comment and closing with an asterisk slash. Print function and functions. Print function. Earth Engine's print function displays the value of a variable or object in the console tab. It's a vital tool for debugging and monitoring results during script development. For example, print, open parentheses, and hello world in between single quotes, close parentheses and semicolon, will print the bracket value in the console. Functions. Functions are named blocks of code that perform specific tasks. They allow you to break down your code into manageable, reusable parts. Functions can accept input parameters, making them versatile and efficient. The structure of a function is as follows. Start with defining the code to execute within curly brackets. Begin with the keyword function, followed by the function's name. Include parentheses with input parameters. Call the function by its name and provide input parameters when needed. Thank you for joining us. And get ready for an exciting learning adventure in geospatial data analysis.